Welcome to hashing out the ebook readers part two for Digital Crack. Mario again. Um, I just wanted to get you guys uh, up on the latest of the ebook reader um, hashings that I've done, and uh, one particular update basically is the rooted nook color. Uh, this I've already mastered, so um, this is actually here for. I guess comparison visual um, aspects because we're not really going to go over any of that, anything new on this outside from the fact that they're supposed to be um, adding uh, page numbers now uh, to the Kindle. So when you're turning your page, you actually see numbers. And I think that's to select books, to, but don't quote me. So I'm not sure every book actually is going to show you pages. So it should, but that's my opinion. But that's neither here nor there. But anyway, as I said, uh, we... Um, rooted this and you can tell here I have a standard root uh, you can find the instruction on how to root your nook online on YouTube uh, and instructions on how to unroot it it's very simple actually it only took me 12 to 12 15 minutes tops to root this thing it was actually very easy actually um, you will need a um, a uh, mini USB um, stick or not stick but mini um, micro SD card uh, to go into the unit so that you can transfer the files that are needed to root it. Um, let's see here, but basically this is standard root, like I said, um, but what I did is I added an ADW launcher. I think that's right, yeah, ADW launcher to it, and it gives, it gives me the actual uh, launcher for the application, so I can bring up all my applications right here. So you can go through and look at your applications from there, and then you can um, customize basically you can customize this whole bar right here this bar comes with ADW but it defaults uh, I think with the launcher so what I did is I just added the launcher and I added my Gmail and um, what is this Dolphin browser so now you have it for that um, your Gmail actually comes through just like regular Gmail so it's pretty cool uh, and you hit back button right here I'll take you back and then your dolphin browser oops dolphin browser comes up and I was on Twitter I don't know how I got the dolphin okay there it goes all right dolphin browser comes up no problem uh, scrolls and pinches and zooms just like um, just like um, your phone would do I guess and uh, let's see here back here back one more time there we go all right and um, and we also have my Kindle application see and this is where it gets good because here are all my books on my Kindle and here are my books on my Kindle too but I don't have to have two separate devices now like I said I can have all of my Kindle books and my Nook books all on one device the only drawback is that you have a backlit screen. So, for those who are in concern with a backlit screen, yes, it's it's going to be a little uncomfortable um, for some people. For most people, actually. There are a small percentage of people out there that don't have a problem with it whatsoever because they daily read on their computer to the point where their eyes are probably used to it and has already received whatever damage it's going to receive. But and I'm just joking on that, but... Um, certain people are used to reading from a backlit screen, but the majority of the people uh, find it easier to read from an ebook uh, that has e ink over a backlit screen LCD monitor type uh, ebook reader. But, like I said, that is the advantage of the Kindle uh, over this and the fact that it has a month long battery. This, however, does not. I probably have to charge this thing once every other day, if not once every once a day and a half basically every 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 time I get to the second day maybe in the afternoon I'll probably have to charge it depending on how often I actually read and go on the internet so um, the books on the Kindle actually pull up and they look like that and you can customize it by tapping on the bottom and hitting menu and it pulls up if you can see that it pulls up your your view options, your go to, your home, uh, and bookmark, more. So basically, I can 
change the the background and the brightness and the size of the fonts right here. So that's a pretty good, you know, standard uh, options for an ebook reader. Now on here, of course, you're going to get more because it's standalone, but at least uh, they do give you those kind of options for this unit. Now you see the little flickering, waving, wavy lines. You're only going to see that on camera. You won't see that actually when you're reading it for yourself because your eyes are not going to pick it up. So don't worry about that. Um, let's see what else. Um, you can customize everything by adding widgets. I have a power widget here. I can turn off my Wi-Fi or GPS, which it does not have any. I don't know why I would need that. Um, and syncing. So when I get a email notification, it pops up right over there. So that's pretty cool. Um, and Facebook, of course. And I have my Twitter application and news reports here. So that's how it works. Uh, I even have a uh, Google bar where you can search uh, your Nook entirely or just search, search the web. That's a good option. Um, the keyboard, um, and you also have a, you know, multiple screens. You have one, two, th what, five, what, six, six screens, okay? And, uh, no, five, sorry, can't count. Five screens uh, where you can customize and you can pinch. I think you can pinch to bring it out, I think. Something like that. I thought you could do that. Yeah, it doesn't work very well, I guess. But you do have that option to do that if you want. There he goes. It's working better now. There. I guess I just weren't doing it right, I guess. If you're not doing it right, you're not going to get the same results, are you? <laughs> but anyway, um, you can uh, also, like I said, you have the option down here at the bottom, as I pointed out in the last video, where you can go immediately to a book that you were just opening on, on your Nook. Now, it won't immediately go back, like say, for instance, as you saw, I was, let's go back to the Kindle app. Let's go in the Kindle app if you're going. Let's see. There we go. And um, let's say, for instance, I'm reading this, and this is the book I'm reading from my Kindle, and I go back to my home page, and I hit last book. It's not going to actually pull up the last book you read on your Kindle, which is a bummer, because if that's what you're reading from, I think it should default to the last thing that you're actually reading, not the last Nook book that you're actually reading. So that little button down there actually um, for the book is actually talking about the last Nook book that you read, not the last Kindle. So um, you can make the bar disappear by swiping up just like that. See? Bar appears, bar disappears. That's pretty awesome. Um, so let's see. Then you have, you know, of course, your Wi-Fi connections and everything. But bottom line is that this thing has shocked me. You know, it has become my, eh, I guess, my everyday reader so far. Um, but there are moments that I miss this, and that is the 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 you know, I guess, the Achilles heel for me is the fact that there are moments that I still miss my Kindle. Um, I don't know what it is, the form factor, I don't know how, I don't know if it's just the e-ink itself and the battery life, but um, this thing would have to be charged, like I said, at least once every other day, and with the backlit screen, uh, you're probably going to limit yourself to to maybe an hour and a half of reading uh, before you probably want to rest your eyes, uh, as opposed to this thing, you can read, 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 read until, you know, you actually get tired, and that's, I guess, where I'm at. Uh, this can be considered, probably in my opinion, based on everything that it does and everything you can make it do, especially with Honeycomb, um, uh, Honeycomb um, OS uh, available for it now. It's probably for 250 the best buy of an ebook reader that you can buy out there. So there you have it. That's my opinion on it. It's probably going to be the the go-to ebook reader for 250. Uh, because it can be transformed into a full-fledged tablet, and that's amazing. And that's why this probably won't be able to compete with this overall if you're matching feature for feature, but it becomes a love or hate thing. It becomes, which one do you love, e-ink, or do you love uh, tablets? And that's where, I guess, everything comes down to. So thanks for listening, and thanks for watching. This is Digital Crack, signing out.